What's going on guys? I'm Brett and today we are talking about four gallon backpack sprayers. So hang on. Alright guys, hey, so we're talking about battery powered backpack sprayers today. So let's go down the list of what I actually have here today. I'm gonna go over some of the features, I'm gonna go over the price, and uh, then I'm gonna put them through a couple of tests and then tell you what I think about them. Starting from this end, we have the Black & Decker 20 volt, uh, which is basically the Black & Decker version of the Chapin 20 volt. Similar product, almost identical, both actually manufactured by Chapin. So then the next one we have is the Solo 416 Li. And then after that, next we've got the Flowzone Typhoon 2V. And then rounding out the list, we have the Milwaukee M18 Switch Tank Backpack Sprayer. So let's talk about the features of each of them. So going from cheapest to most expensive, we have the Black & Decker or the Chapin at $165. The next, You've got the Solo 416 at $318, followed by the Flow Zone, which retails for $365. And then finally, you've got the Milwaukee, and the Milwaukee's kind of an odd one, because the Milwaukee, for just the sprayer, just the sprayer, it retails for $299 but that doesn't include the battery uh, or the charger. So if you get the battery or the charger, it's another like 100 bucks on top of that. Now, the nice part about the Milwaukee is if you've already got Milwaukee tools, you already have a battery, you already have a charger. So that factors into the situation. So anyways, there you go. So going off of features, let's, uh, let's run down the Black & Decker real quick. The Black & Decker, like I said, 165 bucks. It's a four gallon backpack sprayer. It sprays at 35 PSI, comes with two tips, weighs 10 pounds, and is one speed only, and comes with a 20 volt, 1.5 amp hour battery. So that's the Chapin, Black & Decker, whatever you wanna call it. Next up, you got the Solo. Now the Solo is a five gallon capacity, so it's a little bit bigger capacity. It comes with two tips, it's got two speeds, and I couldn't find anywhere where it says what the uh, PSI output is of this sprayer, uh, but it's got, it's got two speeds, so it's a high and a low. Um, and that comes with a 11 volt, 7.8 amp hour battery, so, so a much higher amp hour battery. Lower voltage, higher amp hours. The next sprayer that we have is the Flowzone Typhoon 2V. Now that is a four gallon backpack. It is an 18 volt, 5.2 amp hour battery that comes with it. And it comes with three different nozzles. It's a variable speed uh, diaphragm pump that goes from seven PSI up to 115 PSI. So you're, as the price goes up, your options are also going up. So it's, it's got a, a much wider range of output pressure than both the Solo and the Black & Decker. And then last but not least is the Milwaukee. It's a four gallon, comes with two tips, a fan tip and a cone tip that's adjustable. It's the heaviest sprayer by far at 22 pounds. So it's a heavy sucker and that's dry. So, you know, you add four gallons of liquid at 32 pounds for four gallons roughly, and you're talking, it's 50 pounds. It, it can be quite heavy. Uh, now the Milwaukee has five distinct speeds going from 20 PSI all the way up to 120 PSI. And then the battery is a M18 battery 
that you can use in any of the other tools that they have. And the M18 battery obviously is an 18 volt and it ranges in amp hours. So the one that I have on this sprayer is a nine amp hour battery. So we're gonna test all these out. I've got a couple of different tests that I wanna try out, so stay tuned. All right guys, so I've set up a tape measure here all the way out to here that goes out to 50 feet. So we're gonna see which of these sprayers will spray the furthest on Pinstream. All right, so the first one that we have is the Chapin 20 volt or the Black & Decker 20 volt. So let's see how far it goes. like 32 feet. All right, so up next we have the Solo 416 Li. And uh, something cool that I just found out about the wand that comes with this is you can unscrew this and it's an extendable wand. It's pretty cool. Hadn't seen that before. So anyways, let's, uh, let's spray it and see what it does. Where do you want me to go? Go up to like, like right around there. So about 30, like 33, 33, 34. Next up, we have the Flow Zone Typhoon 2V. Now, the cool thing about the Flow Zone is the gun and the wand are like a pressure washer. It has these nice pressure washer fittings, so they're nice, quick connect. Uh, and the same thing with the tips. So. That's unique to the flow zone and something that I really like. So let's go ahead and spray. It's 32 feet. Last up we have the Milwaukee M18 switch tank backpack sprayer. Um, this doesn't have the quick change fittings like the Flow Zone does, but uh, I really like that it comes with this metal wand. It seems to be really sturdy. Everything on this backpack feels real sturdy. So let's go ahead and spray. Oh, 36 feet. All right, okay, so let's talk about comfort and ease of use. So first off, let's use this uh, flow zone. So the flow zone comes with these two straps here. It's fairly easy to put on. It's not, not too heavy. It has a chest strap but no waist strap. These straps are pretty comfortable though. The back has a little bit of padding up in here and it has the retention for the hose and the wand that you can take out and use pretty easily. So that's the flow zone. All right, next up we've got the Milwaukee. Now the Milwaukee is the heaviest of all of the sprayers. So putting it on from the ground can be kind of a pain. I find it's easier to put it up on something that you can just slip on. The straps are not nearly as padded as the flow zone is, but they are nice and wide. It's got the chest strap. And then also thankfully, because it's a heavy sprayer, it has the waist strap as well. So it's really, a pretty comfortable sprayer 
to walk around on despite it being so heavy. It also has the wand that can be easily stored and easily taken off and used whenever you're ready. All right, so next up we have the Black & Decker or the Chafin. It's kind of the bare bones of all the sprayers. The straps are thin. It's, uh, it's got the uh, chest strap with it as well. If you're wearing it right, you can use the chest strap. It's got the chest strap with it. Doesn't really help much. And it doesn't have a retention, a retention system for the wand except for on top of the back on the lid. So it's kind of a pain to use. So, but again, this is the cheapest of all four of these sprayers that we're looking at. One of the things that I really have not liked, and I've had this sprayer for over a year now, one thing that I really have not liked about it is the way that these straps are clipped in onto here. So they just come on these clips and clip right off super easily. So there's been a lot of times where I've set this down and it sits funny and it unclips it and I go to pick it up and don't realize that it's done that and the strap just comes right off. So those straps are kind of a pain. The last one we have is the Solo 416 Li. Now it's a five gallon backpack sprayer so it's a little bit heavier when full because it's got the extra gallon in there. It doesn't have a handle at the top, which would be really nice if Solo would have had a handle. All of the other sprayers have handles at the top, so you can kind of pick them up and use the handle to help you. The Solo does have some pretty padded straps. They're pretty comfortable. There's a little bit of padding on the back and it has a wand retention, but the wand retention is kind of in an awkward place. You can get it pretty easily, but it's not not the easiest. It doesn't have a chest strap and it doesn't have a waist strap. One thing that it does have that the other sprayers don't is it has this pressure gauge here on the wand. I wish a lot of these other sprayers would have that as well. They just don't. So that's the Solo. All right, so what I have set up here is I've got all of the sprayers set up. I'm gonna turn them on and we're gonna see which sprayer will spray continuously for the longest time. All right, folks, so we're gonna start up all of these here sprayers and I'm gonna see how long they'll spray for. So I've got them turned all the way up onto their highest settings and they're spraying until they die. minute mark. All of them are still going strong. Alright, so at 22 minutes the Chapin has died. It is not pumping anymore, it is dead. Thirty-five minutes of spraying, still going strong. Alright guys, we just hit one hour of the flow zone. The Milwaukee and the Solo are spraying just like they were an hour ago. I have no idea how long they're gonna go for it. An hour and 15 minutes in. As you can see, 
It's still going. I may have underestimated how long this is going to take. I might be here the rest of the day. All right, folks. We're at the two hour mark. Two hours and one minute. Flow zone, Milwaukee, solo. Still spraying. How long will they go? How high will my water bill be? I don't know. Folks, the flow zone has just died. It will not spray anymore at the two minute, or the two hour and seven minute mark. Good job, flow zone. Two hours and seven minutes. Y'all, the Milwaukee finally died. Three hours and 51 minutes and the Milwaukee has finally died. Leaving the Solo as the Solo sprayer that is still going. So let's, uh, let's keep it going. Finally did it. It finally died. Four hours and 40 minutes it took. The solo 416 continuously spraying to die. I had no idea that it would last that long. So solo, way to go. Congratulations. That was freaking awesome. Alright guys, I'm tired. After four hours and 40 minutes of standing there watching sprayers spray, refilling sprayers countless times, the Solo 416 came out on top with the total runtime continuously of four hours and 14 minutes. Pretty impressive. All right, so final wrap up. Um, honestly, all of those sprayers performed pretty well. You know, the Chapin, yeah, it, it wasn't the best, you know, it, it, it was the shortest uh, lasting battery life. Uh, it sprayed out pretty average for what all the other sprayers did. You know, it, it, it performed okay. And really, you know, I mean, it's 150 bucks. It's the cheapest battery backpack sprayer on the list. So I think if you're on a, if you're on a small budget, if you spray liquids occasionally and you're tired of using a pump sprayer, the Chapin is a decent option. The Flow Zone I really liked. Uh, it performed great, it lasted a long time, and it was putting out the strongest stream during the battery life test. Uh, I feel like it had the, the highest pressure the entire time, so I wasn't too surprised when it died first out of the three higher tiered sprayers. I don't think that's a reflection poorly on the flow zone at all. I think it's a fantastic sprayer. It's got a lot of pressure. I like the variable pressure settings where you can dial it in to put it just what you need. And I really like the quick connect system that it has. I didn't really have any, any big downsides to the flow zone. I thought the flow zone was super comfortable to wear and it was just a really good sprayer all around. So I think you can't go wrong with the flow zone. Uh, the next one, the Milwaukee. The Milwaukee did great. It's, it lasted forever. Uh, the big variable with the Milwaukee is with the Milwaukee M18 batteries, you can get batteries that range in amp hours. And so this battery that I had was a nine amp hour battery. So 
take that as you will. I don't think that the nine amp hour battery is what comes if you get the package, but if you have one, obviously it lasted forever. It lasted almost four hours of continuous spraying and the pressure really didn't decrease. So pretty happy with the Milwaukee. Um, the only downside that I've really found to the Milwaukee, and a lot of people have brought it up in the video that I previously talked about, uh, I'll link it up here, is the, uh, the Milwaukee doesn't get every single ounce of fluid out of the bottom of the tank. It leaves a little bit in there, a little bit more than others, but honestly, in my opinion, not so much that it's a deal breaker. Milwaukee's really comfortable. I really like the strap system. It's got the, it's got the belt and it's got the chest strap as well. Really a good, fantastic sprayer. Uh, if you're, I think if you're already invested in Milwaukee tools, it's a great option for you. And then last but not least is the Solo. The Solo really, really impressed me. I wasn't too sure what to think. I've used a couple Solo products in the past and they've been good. So I knew it was gonna be a good sprayer, but I didn't think it was gonna do as well as it did. The downside with the Solo sprayer is when you fill it all the way up to five gallons, it's a little heavy and you don't have a uh, waist strap. So other than that, that Solo was awesome. It doesn't have a battery that you can switch out with other tools, which yeah, when you're looking at stuff like the Chapin or the Black & Decker sprayer, that uses a Black & Decker 20 volt that you can use on other tools if you have other Black & Decker tools. And the Milwaukee, obviously, if you have other Milwaukee tools, you can use the M18 battery on those tools as well. So you don't get that with the Solo or the flow zone. Those are both proprietary batteries. So that's kind of the downside of those ones. Overall, all of the sprayers were good. I think, you know, if you're looking for a high-end sprayer, the flow zone, the solo, and the Milwaukee are all great options. They're all similar price. So if you're looking for, for a, a nice backpack sprayer that appears to be built really well, and comfortable and will last a long time. I think all of those will work really well. Yeah, so other than that, that's about it, guys. I appreciate you watching. If there's something that I didn't cover or something that you think that I said wrong, make sure to leave that down in the, in the comments. Uh, if you like what I'm doing, make sure you smash the like button, all that youtube -y jazz, comment, subscribe, and yeah. I will see you later. Bye.